We're now moving to the last uh, uh, theme, uh, which is synthesis. We have the presentation. Atman? So this theme is basically, we are, we are going to deal with two issues. One is synthesis of our Sanatana Dharma globally. And one is synthesis by individuals who are bridging the past, but using the contemporary language, contemporary form to continue into the future. So we have, including me, five speakers. I will start off with how we can be a, a global soft superpower. And then we have Nalina Rajgopal. And after Nalina, we have uh, uh, Sriram Emani and uh, Halim Khan. And finally, we'll end with a performance by Madhur Nataraj. I just wanted, Advaita Kala was supposed to present uh, a talk on masala and how uh, globally Indian food and Indian films have been uh, popular. But uh, she's not here because of uh, her TV engagements. And so she, called, she said, Kiran, I won't be able to make it. So I am making a brief presentation on what is it that we need to do to become a soft power by 2030? Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So if you just look at different kinds of power, military power, economic power, and cultural power, and look at the top countries, and US, China, India, Germany, Japan, South Korea, and Brazil, and look at this table in terms of where each country is. Clearly, USA is dominant in all the three. Whereas China is not really a cultural power, but it's dominant in the last two. The other countries are nowhere in the reckoning as far as uh, cultural power is concerned. But as far as India is concerned, we don't have oil, we don't have coal, we don't have any natural resources that we can become uh, global economic power, but we have culture. So we have to look at culture as a source of becoming an economic power. Next slide, please. So culture is nice, it's an experiential feeling, it's an emotive feeling, but ultimately we have to start looking at culture either from an economic point of view. We have to develop a strategy to use culture to become an economic power. Yoga Day was the first initiative of a push strategy. So far, whatever has happened in terms of our culture becoming, uh, it has all happened because of pull. Now we have to start thinking at a very conscious level, how do we push? We have to outline the verticals and some of the verticals that I talk about are uh, mentioned below. Spirituality, Ayurveda, yoga, cuisine, handicraft, literature, visual arts, performing arts, music, films, tourism, and design. The idea is to develop a 50 city matrix. You have 12 verticals, you have 50 cities based on the diaspora presence as well as the GDP. And look at the presence in, 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 in across all these things. Next slide, please. The Ministry of External Affairs, till two years back, had a ministry, sub Ministry of State for NRIs. But for some strange reason, they canceled, they sort of merged that. One of the things should be that within the Ministry of External Affairs, there should be a ministry for outreach, just in terms of, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm on the right and I'm not really in, uh, wanting to create more governance, but basically to have a minister for outreach, which basically focuses on reaching out, uh, uh, reaching out to the world. The other thing is most of the cultural enterprises, enterprises are very mi uh, small and medium enterprises. So we need to think of structures, how we can do, bring about scale and scale economics while looking at these small enterprises. I'm happy to announce that uh, uh, Abhijit and I, we're going to launch this uh, network of uh, Indian cultural entrepreneurs. I've requested uh, Abhijit to be the Devang Mehta of uh, like a NASCOM. So the idea is that this would be like a FAPKI or a CII or a NASCOM. will be a global body of a network of uh, cultural entrepreneurs who are promoting uh, culture and they uh, and the, it's a trade body of all entrepreneurs who are promoting uh, culture. 
the other thing that uh, we require is an angel network that would look at investing in uh, different ventures because these are smaller ventures. So a, a, a technology platform where all the angels come together, whenever there is a, 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 a proposal, the, uh, somebody who, uh, interested would be able to fund that. Mudra. We have Mudra Bank which has taken off in a big way, which does refinancing to Indian entrepreneurs uh, who are uh, micro and uh, uh, small uh, enterprises. But the thing is that we have to think of a Mudra global, wherein Mudra looks at refinancing a city bank or a, a, a DBS or a, a foreign bank. Basically any entrepreneur anywhere in the world wants to set up a restaurant, wants to set up some uh, enterprise, he is able to walk into the foreign bank and ask for a, a loan and he can be sure that there would be a refinancing. The bank would be having no problem, they'll make a margin, but they would get a refinancing from uh, a Mudra or an equivalent. So basically the idea is to think of entrepreneurs globally. It's not just looking at entrepreneurs in India, but to looking at entrepreneurs globally. All of them are also our ambassadors, so look at how to finance them. Somebody wants $100,000 to set up and pay a rental deposit for a yoga studio. Sure, he walks in and we finance him. I live in Singapore and go to Bali and several times I have uh, visited Bali and one of the things that is beautiful about Bali apart from the beaches and the Hindu culture that it represents, unique Hindu culture that it represents, there are three things that happen. There are artisans, there are artists and there are architects and designers. The confluence because they, they, they have a lot of villas uh, that they build the confluence of these three has created a unique situation wherein the contemporization of handicrafts. So there is purity in the artisan's work, but the designers come in and they try to contemporize it. So that, that's the way wherein the language continuously evolves. So the technology goes back to the artisans and there's a continuous evolution. And that only happened because architects from Australia and from Europe started living there because they had enough business there. So what I propose is that there has been 100 smart cities that we have, we have talked about. One smart city that we build somewhere in the south of Goa near Tarbat, wherein we ask all the, uh, uh, all the villages, all the places where our, our handicrafts are done, uh, ask them to give us five families and uh, give them land and build these uh, common facilities for manufacture, for export, so that anybody who comes in and Goa is a beautiful place and south of Goa is a beautiful place, a lot of artists already here, architects are already here. So just imagine the situation wherein entire handicrafts of India are all available in one situation and then that's just a smart city, people fly in and there is uh, a complete this thing. And this goes back to the respective villages. So we need to think of building a Bali. Presence in all global festivals, there's so many festivals, literary festivals, music festivals. How do you ensure? Burn Man. There's so many places wherein we have to think of how do we make our presence felt. Then lastly, what I would uh, appeal to <laughs> Ram Maharaj again for is there are so many of non-Indians, non-Hindus who buy Indian art, who are practitioners of Indian art, who are experienced, who love Indian art globally. There's so many people. There's a Japanese guy who is learning Gatam and they, I mean just, just thousands and tens of thousands. Are we even celebrating them? Why don't we think of a festival wherein we invite all of them and we have a three day festival wherein they are all performing and we are celebrating them and we are felicitating them. Why don't we think of it like that? We should have a festival. There's a concept of Indophile. Let's start to talk about a festival for Indic files. These are the large mega trends that I've been observing in the last, uh, uh, last few years. One is there is this whole thing about consciousness that uh, you know, everybody's talking about consciousness and consciousness studies and meditation, mindfulness, that's a big trend. World entirely is going towards craft. That's becoming small is beautiful. So everything, everybody wants sustainable and craft. And then environment friendly, health and experience. Everybody wants a curated experience. Next slide please. As far as our Sanatana Dharma is concerned, if you break the Sanatana Dharma into four C's, you have ceremony, consciousness I included, including um, Vedanta, Ayurveda, Yoga, all that is uh, consciousness, mindfulness, meditation, and then culture, which is basically our visual arts, performing arts and all that. And care is Ayurveda and uh, environment. 
So if you just look at breaking all these into four C's, forget about ceremony for the present, but globally, all these three things, there are billions of people or millions of people who are enjoying different facets of our culture already. Next slide, please. So if you look at the word synthesis, the combination of components or elements to form a connected whole. So that's the, that's the beauty of what is, what's the meaning of a synthesis. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So I would say power is something which is like you're trying to control somebody, even though you try to reduce that control by using the word soft. Still power. My uh, suggestion would be uh, is for the discourse to call us ourselves as a synthesizer. India can aim to be the leading global synthesizing agent by 2030. As a GSA, India can enable the transform, transformation of one billion people into index through the timeless values of consciousness, care, and the curated experiences that they come to India. And you curate experiences for them from our vibrant culture. This is what we should be thinking of. Next slide, please. Target one billion index by 2030. Think design. Give them, give them experiences. Think non-linear. It's not going to happen if you just look, do like this. Think disruptive. Think exponential. We can be a global synthesizing agent by 2030. Believe you me. I now request Nalina to come off. <laughs>